to welcome him to our show to discuss a topic that seems to be on everybody's mind um, today. Um, and it is something that you hear no matter where you go. We, we like to take our cameras to the streets, you know, just to sample what, what uh, the public's thinking. And we have one clip now from uh, a, a resident who, who talked to us quite frankly about, you know, what's going on in the city and what he thinks might, might need to, to be done. Let's see. They have, to be, they have to get behind law enforcement. Law enforcement in this city is a must. And we have to have good law enforcement in order to, you know, and, and everybody from the top on down has to adhere to the letter of the law. It's not something that can be passed over for any elite group. You know, we have to maintain law and order in the city, and we have to be able to... Hi, and welcome to Coping During the COVID Crisis. I'm Janet Gross. This has really been a year and a half of counting. Good evening, I'm Maria Muro, and welcome back to our show. Head and neck cancer accounts for 5 to 10% of all cancers in the United States. Head and neck cancer is more common in people over the age of 50 and three times more common in men than in women. If detected early, head and neck cancer is often curable. Tonight, I'm excited to have Dr. Paul Spring, a local head and neck surgeon who is here in our studio. Dr. Spring received his medical degree from Ohio State University, followed by his residency in otolaryngology at Tulane University with a fellowship at MD Anderson Cancer Center. He is board certified with the American Board of Otolaryngology. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Spring. Thanks a lot, Maria. You Thanks know, always good me. to see you, and you know, you're, you're, you have a big. Uh, let me tell you. say you need more cowbell but hey right now primetime sports is coming to you i can't wait for the show this is our fourth episode and this might be the best of all hey hey we're gonna have a lot of great guests today but first i have some local news going on right now one of our local sons one of our favorites peyton manning retired yesterday inhabitants of our city here now to tell us about how she plans to accomplish this task is the mayor of new orleans the honorable latoya Cantrell. Madam Mayor. Hi, how are you? I'm well, and I'm, I'm doing even better since you've agreed to be on, the, on this uh, broadcast. Oh, it doesn't take much, Norman, <laughs> when you ask. Well, thank you for being here. With a great coach from UNO and Iowa State and the Bulls, leave the game early. So, Archie, here's your chance to explain. What happened in that game? Well, <laughs> I, and I may excuse you. You know, I always pride myself in really a lot of sporting events I've been to in, in not leaving. And people do. I, yeah. I get it. Yeah. And believe me, I, I can sure understand in my career, I know a bunch of people left. <laughs> Early. And I, I, I think my wife and kids were leaving early. <laughs> but Tim had another friend with him and from um, up around Hattiesburg. Right, yeah. And we were down. How much? I mean, so it, was it was 18. It was eight minutes and then it was 17. Really, what yeah. was funny to go to, go to that game with Tim, Tim said he wanted to go see the two teams that had fired him. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was Tim's assistant. Yeah, right, right. right. Yeah. Like right. That. admired him, uh, thought that, uh, you know, his leadership was just like – unapproachable and and just everything that he did was just such class even his great commercials i love this they're commercial unbelievable too. i know yeah i love this so commercial funny. but i just uh, back to last year with mccoy mm -hmm. and now R ruiz three straight years i want to say three or four straight years three out of the last four three straight that you've started a rookie so they trust the you know yes they're fine with it but it's because probably they trust their scouting and they trust mm -hmm. who they are and the single thing that really stood out to me was when they had their um, offensive line coach, run game coordinator, come on for Michigan and, and address the Saints media. Mm -hmm. And he said that, what, 98, 99% mm -hmm. of the calls yeah. that Ruiz made right. were... Good evening and welcome to the Catholic Community Foundation's 2021 virtual celebration of Catholic generosity. I'm Corey Howard, Executive Director of the Catholic Community Foundation, and I'm excited to be joining you from WLAE studio here in New Orleans. We're so grateful to LAE and Willwood's community for their partnership in helping us bring this celebration of Catholic generosity into your homes. 
This evening is really all about you, the generous people who make our community unlike any other. And we're thrilled that you've tuned in. Good evening, I'm Janet Gross, and I'm so pleased to join you for the Catholic Community Foundation's Celebration of Generosity. And I'm very pleased to be sitting here with two prime examples of that generosity, your 2021 St. John Paul II Award winners, Lloyd and Jan Tate. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, your work as a couple preparing other couples. For the herald shall sing glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the triumph of the skies. Welcome back. We're running into more and more people these days, people we know and don't know, people who are returning to a more social environment, but maybe in a different way or at a different pace than we are. So as we talk about handling this with grace and kindness, we've asked Dr. Amanda Salgado, adjunct professor of counseling and behavioral science at the University of Holy Cross to join us. Dr. Salgado, this is an issue even in non-pandemic times. We can be judgmental when people choose different paths. So how do we stop ourselves from doing that? Absolutely, <laughs> that's a great point. Uh, you know, we, as human beings, it's in our nature to, to be judgmental. Um, and we often think that our, our worldview and our paths are um, the most appropriate ones and we often get confused or agitated. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Inside New Orleans Sports. I'm your host, Eric Asher. Over the next hour, we're going to cover all the home teams. We'll talk about the Saints, LSU, Tulane, Pelicans, UNO, all on tap uh, this afternoon on in this absolutely Chamber of Commerce Day here in New Orleans. Where, where, where's, where's my director, William Hill? Can we open up the windows here today? I mean, the breeze that's blowing. I mean, we live for this weather here in South Louisiana. And of course, today's the first day of it. First day of fall for us. Obviously, the good folks at CST. Uh, Jeff and Ashley, thank you so much. And by the way, my producer, Will Hill, he makes it all happen. Hey, I can't hear anything without Kenny Juno. Thanks to our underwriters, also the WLA production staff, including Ron Yeager, Jim Dotson, Logan Rafia, Alex Chacon, and our director, William Hill.